like to congratulate to both teams. I'm really impressed by their knowledge of, of the international law, human rights law, com at comparative level, and especially European Convention on Human Rights and the court's work, uh, case law. Uh, knowledge of fact as well is impressive. Uh, and uh, clarity, organization, all of this uh, is very impressive. What I would like to um, say is a kind of uh, advice. Uh, so um, in order to uh, correctly uh, or um, fully uh, reply the question, uh, my advice would be that in future you reply directly, avoiding... Um, circling around the question or giving uh, already prepared uh, replies, uh, quoting other legal instruments, etc. It's good that you show that you know uh, hard law, soft law, all instruments that you're up to date with the new case law. But when the question is, is uh, precise, it's better that you, that you give a precise answer up to the point, short, uh, concise answer, uh, and that's it. And then try to use your knowledge uh, uh, in 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 uh, elaborating uh, uh, in general presentation, elaborating your arguments. So that would be my advice. Uh, after I really congratulate to both teams for excellent presentation. Thank you. Now I think that we should hear other other judges. Professor Gomez, maybe. Thank you, thank you. Um, well, thank you very much for uh, to the participants, the oralists. That was a, a wonderful performance uh, on on everyone's side. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, thank you also to the uh, to those who wrote the 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 problem, the case. You know there are lots of uh, current challenges, and uh, and therefore we're talking about legal challenges that sometimes are not uh, absolutely resolved by the existence uh, this, the existing case law or jurisprudencia in the inter-American system. Um, this also together with the fact that because of, of um, the nature of this uh, moot court competition, you have the challenge of using multiple sources from different regions, from different systems yeah, and apply them to the same case. That makes this moot court very challenging, but it also makes this moot court special, very interesting. Um, so I want to congratulate you all for the use of sources you, you've, you've made for this case. Um, it is important to note, as a piece of advice, that the interplay between uh, soft law and hard law in the argument is, is crucial, it's really very important, and it's also important to uh, explain mm, when we are in front of hard law and soft law, the difference, the interaction, uh, when are we in front of a, a new issue? Hmm? And I think this is, this is something to take into account by both teams. I know the time is short, but this is part of international law and something to take into account for the future when you are making arguments. Um, another element is we saw in this session, some moments in which questions were avoided and direct answers were not given. It's very, very important to, to answer the questions uh, posed by the bench. And also from the point of view of strategy, of how to present uh, your case, your argument, sometimes is better to, let's say, buy the bullet and uh, address the difficult issues, honestly, openly, even if it might make the presentation of our argument or winning the case apparently more arduous, more difficult. 
um, sometimes exposing the complexities of the argument is part of uh, the key uh, to success and, and to winning a case, even if uh, we look like we are in a position that is not that advantageous if we do so. So that being said, congratulations uh, again uh, for your participation in the MOOCOM to both teams. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Gomez. Now I would like to give the floor to third judge, uh, Mr. Nine. Thank you, thank you, President. And again, I would I would also like to congratulate uh, both the teams. They were great, and the fact that they have cleared uh, they have cleared um, the semis and prelims, and they are in the final rounds of the World Mood Court. Uh, it's like I congratulate them, and. Uh, I would also say that uh, both the teams were really good on facts. They were very professional and uh, they were very articulative in their answers. And um, they were uh, they knew the facts, they knew their case. And um, even in their responses, they were persuasive. Now on the uh, suggestion part, I would like to say one thing, like if uh, it's, uh, it's really good to balance soft law and uh, hard law. And secondly, um, feel free to ask questions. Like if you are not clear, uh, feel free to ask the judge, like if, uh, if uh, to uh, ask to reframe the question or ask them after you are finished with your question, ask them like if uh, the judge is uh, satisfied with the answer so that uh, the judge like, judge should, you should not run for your, you know, uh, further arguments. Because uh, the reason is I understand like you are short in time, but it also makes uh, judge, judge help to understand that, that you know the question and you, you you didn't avoid the question. And if there are further questions uh, from the judge, uh, they can ask and you can clarify. And uh, lastly, I would say, yeah, I would just uh, like to congratulate both the teams and uh, all the best for the results. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to Professor Petter. Uh, professor, I believe you. Please unmute. Yes, please. Great. Thank you. Uh, I also want to join my colleagues in uh, uh, in in congratulating both teams. Uh, you were confronted by a very complicated hypothetical case uh, of eleven meandering pages. Uh, and therefore it wasn't an easy thing to do. So it was very complicated dealing with the very modern up-to-date issues like COVID, uh, also discussing very up-to-date issues like playing around with the technology, Twitter, Twitter versus Trump. I was also expecting Twitter versus uh, Buhari, Nigeria and so on. But at least you are dealing with really modern issues and the way you did it was excellent. The way you attacked these uh, very new issues, issues relating to, uh, to the current squeeze of uh, civic space, uh, demands for more, uh, for more freedoms and so on. So I, I think you did extremely well given the, the complex of the hypothetical case. And, uh, and therefore, and also the question of politics, Poli uh, we, we, we see this every day, political alliances and uh, utilization of laws to, uh, to, to, to cover political interests and so on. So I, I think it was a very good hypothetical case and uh, you, did, you did justice to the, to the, to the hypothetical case. Uh, therefore, I would like to say that um, uh, you have worked very hard. Uh, you have worked very hard. Uh, you remind me of my... My, 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 my youth in international law in the 80s, but I think you are, you are much, much better than I was during those days. Uh, but I would like to say that uh, results are not important. For me, what is important is that uh, you have showed us very clearly that you are excellent uh, international lawyers and you have a very bright career before you. So congratulations and best wishes. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, dear colleagues. Uh, I think that uh, now we should actually 
just uh, give the space for joining uh, uh, our uh, main room, or we are already in, I I'm not sure. But uh, as far as the program says, uh, uh, now we are going to have a address of uh, Madam High Commissioner. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Judge Jellick, and thank you very much to all the judges uh, for your comments. And um, at this stage, we are, we are going to have the address by the High Commissioner, Ms. Bachelet. I believe that she should be joining us shortly. I believe that's in perhaps in five minutes. I think that's actually we are quite on time, I must say. Um, so once she, once the High Commissioner makes an appearance, I will then briefly introduce her and then um, she will make her remarks. Perhaps if we could just give it a few minutes, then we can begin. Hey, I, I see that uh, Ms. Bachelet is here. Yes. Thank you very much for, for joining this session. And uh, I believe that um, our next speaker needs no introduction. Um, so I will very briefly turn over uh, the mic, so to speak, to uh, Ms. Michelle Bachelet, who is the current um, High Commissioner for Human Rights. Um, Ms. Bachelet, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Mr. Eduardo Capapello, Excellencies, dear participants, it is a pleasure to greet you today. Congratulations for reaching the final round of this year's Nelson Mandela World Human Rights Mood Court. I want to thank and celebrate all of you who joined this competition for your much needed interest and dedication to human rights. You are part of an inspiring generation. We're seeing powerful demonstrations of the commitment of young people to the human rights of all and the health of the planet. Countless times, they, you, have been successful in influencing debates of national and international importance and prompting social change in many different ways. That provides us with a glimpse of the huge potential youth advocacy and activism that can be a force for good and power to drive transformative change. And it gives me reason to hope. You're beginning your careers at a delicate time. And I want to express my respect to you for maintaining your resolve while managing this long pandemic month of physical distancing in your schools and universities. And you have done it in a context of deep global suffering. COVID-19, which, which has claimed over 4 million lives, rising poverty, 
hunger, and inequality, protest about harsh and systemic racism in many societies, and the looming threat of climate change. The pandemic has set off a cascade of human rights disasters of a scope and magnitude that, were, that we have rarely seen, injustice, inequalities, and widespread discrimination of every type. It is reversing progress achieved in many countries and across and regions and pushing millions more people even further behind. But every major crisis in an, or is an opening for transformative change. COVID-19 has laid bare the unbearable cost of neglecting human rights. The pandemic has broadly highlighted where changes need to be made and what those changes need to be. Our efforts must be based on human rights. And for that, we need the law, and therefore you, future practitioners of law around the world. Dear students, we stand now at a crossroads. We can continue denying the scientific facts that we are all in this together, and that no one is safe until we're all safe, and risk a never-ending pandemic, and here I mean both COVID-19 and the pandemic of inequalities it has unquestionably exposed. Let me explain. The profound unfairness of unequal access to vaccines pose a threat to everyone as mutating forms of the virus that may emerge among a largely unvaccinated population. At the same time, the economic consequences of vaccine failure are profound, but in some countries, we already see the benefits that widespread vaccination can have. So we're looking at growing prospect of vastly divergent recoveries exacerbated by underlying failures to invest in human rights-based protections. We can continue to get back to a so-called normal, even though normal is what brought us to where we are today. Or dear student, or we could remember what our eyes have seen and learn the lessons of this crisis in order to recover better, to rebuild in solidarity and ways that correct dysfunctional systems and norms and lead to better policies and more cohesive, more resilient societies. I trust you will agree with me that in fact, both morally and practically, the choice is only one. It is very easy to say, right? But believe me, it is also possible to do. We already have a vaccine against injustice, poverty, inequality, conflict, underdevelopment and environmental catastrophe. It is a vaccine made up of measures we developed after previous global shocks, including two world wars, a pandemic and financial crisis. This vaccine is called human rights. And here, dear students, I look, I look to you. The challenges before us are multiple and complex. Economic recovery, social justice, racial justice, gender justice, and inequalities, digital rights, shrinking civic space, climate change. As your careers develop, I encourage you to remain determined and true to the ideals you are now learning. The law can be a powerful tool in the hands of all looking to make our world more just. The great body of international human rights treaties, laws and recommendations constitutes extremely practical and focused guidance to shape effective policy to prevent and address crisis. Human rights norms constitute a tested and immediately actionable body of, body of guidance for us to rebuild. There are many challenges to the full realization of human rights. Some relate to state resources or legal and constitutional traditions. Many involve a deficit in political will. In light of what we have experienced and learned from COVID-19, we need a very extensive rebuilding of many national and global systems, practices, policies, and even institutions. And you can have a significant role in engaging with these issues so that people's lives can be improved. Dear students, the need for solidarity is an important lesson of this crisis, as is the protective value of human rights-based policies. But above all else, the pandemic has shown us how interconnected we are. We are bound together by human needs to food, to healthcare, and to the knowledge that our loved ones are safe. Human longings for justice, dignity, and a life free of discriminations. Human rights. These are also our human commitments to each other and the generation that will follow us. 
I invite you to join the Secretary General's call for a new social contract and a new global deal that creates equal opportunity for all and respects the rights and freedoms of all. And I also invite you to draw inspiration, further encouragement from Nelson Mandela, whose vision is inspiration for this mood court competition. In a speech addressing the AIDS pandemic in 2005, Nelson Mandela asked, and I will quote him, when the history of our times is written, will we be remembered as the generation that turned our backs in a moment of global crisis, or will it be recorded that we did the right thing? End of quote. We know the path we need to take, and we'll take it hand in hand. Thank you for standing up for human rights. Thank you very much, Ms. Bachelet, for those words. And um, I know that uh, the High Commissioner has, has a pressing commitment immediately after, um, after her remarks. And um, so in the event that the High Commissioner needs to leave, um, I would like to just say a very warm thank you for the time um, that you have taken, not only to speak to, to the young people here, but also to, in a way, present um, your views on human rights and how, as young people, we can actually work uh, towards um, promoting these rights even better. So we thank you for that. Um, we highly appreciate that very much. Thank you so much. And I really count on all of you. So we all advocate much more on human rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, with that, I am going to call upon our second speaker. And our second speaker is uh, Professor Claudia Ma Martin. Uh, Professor Martin is the co-director at the Academy of the Academy on Human Rights and Humanitarian Law at the American University Washington College of Law. Uh, Professor Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Eduardo. Um, on behalf of the Academy of Human Rights and uh, Humanitarian Law at American University, Washington College of Law, I want to congratulate all the participants in the 13th edition of the Nelson Mandela World Human Rights MULCOR competition for the job well done. Uh, in particular, I want to congratulate the finalists of this year's edition, Strathmore University in Kenya and the University, Universidad Central del Ecuador. A congratulations to both. Uh, I'm sure that you did a great job. Um, the Academy, as you know, hosts the Inter-American MULCOM competition every year. We did our competition this year, the 26, 26th edition, and uh, we are very committed to uh, working together with our colleagues to uh, make sure that the World Mooker competition happens every year. I also want to congratulate Eduardo and his team, who again had uh, the challenge to, the, to deliver uh, the competition uh, virtually. We know that this was the dream of uh, Professor Christoph Heinz, who is not with us uh, anymore, but who envisioned this program uh, long before this became a reality. So uh, Eduardo, Franz, and everybody who is involved in this program, your work and uh, this year's competition is a tribute to his memory and commitment to human rights. To the participants, uh, this was again a very difficult year that required resilience and commitment uh, and keeping the spirit up. But as, but, but as I always say to my students and the participants, who have been involved in doing the work this year. As human rights lawyers, we always show up regardless of the challenges. So um, we always commit ourselves to do what needs to be done. So congratulations for being here and for having done this wonderful competition. We hope that this, um, the next year we will be able to be in person, um, but at the same time, I'm very um, aware that the struggle against the pandemic continues. So I hope that the vaccine is rolling out somewhat in everywhere where you are and that you will have, get the chance to get vaccinated and be back to rebuild this world that needs so much work from human rights lawyers like, your, like yourself. So remain engaged, 
That's my final uh, message. Continue to be involved in this part kind of a program. It's a great way to grow, to learn more, and get to know people from everywhere. And um, un poco en español, felicitaciones a todos, felicitaciones a los equipos que llegaron a la final, especialmente a la Universidad Strathmore de Kenia y a nuestros a colegas de la región, la Universidad Central del Ecuador. Sabemos que hacen un gran trabajo en Ecuador, los estudiantes que así... Uh, felicitaciones por estar este año en la competencia desde la academia. Queremos felicitar también al equipo que organizó el programa este año, a Eduardo, a Franz y a todos los que estuvieron involucrados. Sabemos que es un trabajo extraordinario eh, lograr este programa virtualmente. Eh, y a los participantes, solo eh, decirles que sabemos que es un gran esfuerzo, que muchos de ustedes están atravesando momentos difíciles en sus países, eh, y que ha sido una larga pandemia, eh, todos lo sabemos, pero la idea de poder estar aquí y de poder estar involucrados trabajando demuestra que tienen un gran compromiso con los derechos humanos y un gran, gran compromiso con el trabajo que hacen. Que así, a seguir participando, eh, no nos queda nada más que hacer como abogados de derechos humanos, nuestro rol es estar ahí, hacer lo que hay que hacer y trabajar para lograr un mundo mejor. Que así, felicitaciones a todos. Thank you, Eduardo. Thank you, Professor. And, and I think it's 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 important to 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 mention that um, the Academy on Human Rights and Humanitarian Law, of which uh, Professor Martin is co-director, um, they came on as a partner. I believe it's three years ago now, and has opened up um, so many possibilities and has allowed us to expand um, the scope of the competition to. Um, to Latin American and, uh, and other Caribbean countries. And so that is something that uh, we remain ever grateful for. And it's a partnership that we, we continue to really cultivate and, and, and move forward. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Martin. Um, our next speaker is um, someone uh, a little bit closer to home, uh, someone uh, in Pretoria, and uh, I would like to call upon uh, Professor Elsa Skuman. Professor Skuman is the Dean of the Faculty of Law at the University of Pretoria. And uh, with that, Professor, I would like to invite you um, for your remarks. Thank you very much. Um, thank you also uh, for this opportunity. It is an honor and a privilege for me to say a few words. Um, dear judges, participants, and uh, attendees, um, in the beginning of last year, I was very excited because I would have attended this moot in person with uh, Professor Christoph Haynes. I've just become Dean and um, I was really looking forward to that. Of course, COVID bit paid um, to those plans. And this year we are sadly missing Professor Haynes. And sadly, we are also still caught up in this pandemic. However, Although we are restricted as far as travel is concerned and therefore we are divided geographically, although it's good to see everybody's um, video on this call today, the pandemic has not, um, has not only united us on, on, on these virtual platforms, it has also united the whole world in that we now all face the same pandemic albeit that domestic contexts and laws may differ. And yet with, within the context of human rights, we are globally united, um, even though it is in a um, state that we would not have wished upon ourselves. Having listened to the finalists today, um, I was so impressed with the way in which our young minds really grappled with these contemporary challenges and how they argued their cases so persuasively and, and also in the way that they responded to the questions from the judges. Uh, it really filled me with great hope for the future. Um, the future of a world that is currently so embroiled in this pandemic and, and there will be more pandemics and there will be more disasters. But um, these young minds, they will pick up the yoke from those that have gone before them and they will be even stronger. They will be more visible 
and more impactful. Also, ironically, thanks to social media that um, can also be such a threat to our human rights. But to them, I want to say, the future is yours. And also the responsibility for a bright future also rests upon your very capable shoulders. I want to echo what uh, Professor Peter said. Um, honestly, I don't think at that age, I would have been able to perform the way that you have today. Congratulations. As you all know, here in South Africa, we are currently experiencing exceptionally challenging times. Um, COVID-19, protests and also load shedding have combined to create almost the perfect storm, so to speak. And the rule of law is constantly challenged on several fronts. Um, we are not alone in this. There are many other examples around the world. Therefore, the need for human rights to be center stage is more important than ever. Events like this moot serve to underline and, and promote that. And I would like to congratulate everybody who participated and thank you to everybody who was involved in organizing this event. Well done. I want to congratulate all of you. It is events like these that um, make our future look much brighter. Thank you very much and congratulations to everybody once again. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Professor Schumann. And also thank you so much for your words and also really reiterating the importance of the rule of law and how, especially in these times of pandemic, they become it's, it's something that is even more important. I believe that the High Commissioner also touched um, very much on the importance of maintaining our institutions, especially those that safeguard um, human rights and fundamental freedoms. So thank you very much for your words and also thank you very much for your time. And um, I think this is the first time um, almost perhaps in, in our mood history that we are actually running ahead of time. And um, so <laughs> with that, I will like to, to call upon Professor Franz Villun, um, who, as you know, is the director of the Center for Human Rights. And he's going to, he's going to announce the results and uh, award the prizes. And with that, also just give a vote of thanks um, to everyone participating and everyone who has taken the time to uh, to join us this morning. Uh, Professor, uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Eduardo, and uh, good day to, to everyone um, participating, listening in. Um, I will, yes, as Eduardo say, have the privilege to say a few words in thanks and uh, also to make some announcements of winners and call eventually on the president of our court to make the announcement of the a winner of the final round, but we have to keep the suspense going. So you'll allow me to just say, I would like to say five things. Why I think that this year's competition uh, is a particularly interesting, important and noticeable um, event. The first is as always that we do this in the shadow of the great giant Nelson Mandela. Uh, we should re be reminding ourselves that on Sunday, the 18th of July, he would have celebrated his 103rd birthday. Um, and uh, we do what we do also because we are inspired by, by his example. His um, constant guidance and uh, his contemporary relevance, I, I thought, especially to us as South Africans, the, the Dean mentioned you know, South Africa's troubling times. And, and I was reminded of, of, of a statement that, that he made in 2008, actually at the time of his birthday then, he, um, there was a lecture in South Africa at Cliptown Soweto and the President Johnson Sirleaf from Liberia came and she presented a lecture and when he introduced her to present the lecture, uh, Madiba said he uh, commended her for being an example to Africa and the world as one who strived for peace where others were seeking to fight and destroy. And let me quote him, he said, Mandela said, it is so easy to break down and destroy. 
The heroes are those who make peace and build. And I think that is a constant message that kind of reverberates through the world um, uh, that also reminds us on the, on the many uh, important insights that um, Nelson Mandela had and that he has left us with. The second uh, reason why it is special is, I think, mentioned also by, by many others. It is the first mood. It's the first world, Nelson Mandela World Human Rights Mood Court competition that is held without Professor Christoph Heinz. Um, many of us participating and attending today would remember and know Christoph Heinz as the UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Killings and as the member of the UN Human Rights Committee that had been very influential in drafting of, among others, General Command 37. But we at the center and those of us who've been with the MOOT will, will certainly remember him very closely for his, his inspirational role in, in, the, in, the, in this very particular uh, MOOT court competition. It was, it was Christoph's idea, his innovative thinking together with people like Claudia and others um, thinking this through over time and that vision, that, um, that broad uh, embracing thought of how all five regions of the world would be together and argue around what binds us and those are the common and core values of humanity. That, that is Christo's vision and, and we live his legacy as, as Claudia said and we certainly are proud to, to still be doing that. We remember him, him fondly for, for the uh, footsteps that he has carved for us that we can follow. And this mood also does that. A third reason is that it is our second Nelson Mandela virtual mood court competition. Um, obviously that is due to COVID, but I think this year we kind of turned the tables on COVID by making COVID not the reason only for us doing this virtually, but actually becoming the thematic uh, concern of our mood court competition itself. So I think that is interesting that we kind of also became focused in the mood uh, on the issues around COVID-19. And that made it, I think, quite special. Another reason why it is very special is our Spanish language participation has now grown and increased in quality to the extent that we, in fact, had our first multilingual final round. Yeah, the first time that not only English speaking teams were arguing in, in the final round. And I think that's wonderful because uh, that represents and shows also the global nature of this endeavor, the World Mood Court competition. And let me add then to that, the fact that um, we will this year also for the first time uh, have a particular prize, which is the Commonwealth Christoph Heinz Memorial Prize uh, that will be awarded to uh, the Commonwealth team that had done best. <laughs> so I am going to uh, 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 interrupt my um, discourse to ask uh, Mr. Yash Asvi and Nahim, who is representing the Commonwealth Secretariat to please uh, introduce to us the uh, Commonwealth Prize. Yash Asvi, please. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Friends. Um, it is, uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, all the teams uh, which participated in this 13th edition of the prestigious Nelson Mandela World Human Rights Mood Court Competition. And um, as you mentioned, on behalf of the Commonwealth Secretariat, it is my honor to announce that the Commonwealth will be awarding Christoph Hens Memorial Commonwealth Prize in memory of late Professor Christoph Hens, a former director of the Center for human rights in recognition of his service to the cause of human rights. The, as you Also, as you rightly mentioned, Christoph Hens Memorial Commonwealth Prize will be awarded to the Commonwealth team who ranks highest in, this, in the competition. And the prize money will be 5,000 uh, British pound. Thank you, Professor. Thank, thank you very much both to you for being with us today and for the Commonwealth. Please ex extend our great uh, gratitude to uh, the uh, Commonwealth uh, Secretariat for uh, taking this bold step. We really appreciate that. Let me then come to my word of thanks. Um, my, my word of thanks will, will start with those that are broadly involved in the Moot Court competition over, over many years. Claudia Martin, Professor Martin is here. Uh, the Moot Court has been uh, organized together for the last few years with the Academy 
on human rights and humanitarian law at Washington College, American University. Thank you very much, Claudia, together uh, with your colleagues and for also being here today. We really treasure that close relationship. There is also the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, obviously represented today by the High Commissioner herself. Uh, they were together from the very outset as the partners. Christoph had the vision that if one wants to do something at this level, you have to bring the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights on board. And we in particular mentioned the role of the uh, Human Rights Council branch within the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights. We also further acknowledge the role of the South African Permanent Mission to the United Nations in Geneva um, that had over time also assisted us and contributed in a number of ways. Thank you again to the Commonwealth uh, uh, for the prize that was also then announced uh, uh, today. I also would like to thank very much the Global Campus of Human Rights. I think you've heard that uh, Professor Veronica Gomez here is the president of the Global Campus of Human Rights. And um, the Global Campus of Human Rights is a partnership, a network of seven uh, regional master's programs that really, again, um, covers the globe. So it follows the same um, vision that this world a human rights mood court competition follows, namely to advance the cause of human rights um, across the globe. There are seven programs and they stretch literally all the five United Nations regions. And um, we have been very, very fortunate as, the, as this global competition to be supported by that global campus. I think because there are very close synergy in the goals that both the global campus and this Nelson Mandela World Human Rights Mood Court competition strive towards. So we acknowledge and thank uh, that very, very important source of support. Let me also mention the Lucerne Academy for Human Rights Implementation. It has been customary for the winners of this competition to attend a session at this Lucerne Academy. Regrettably, it has not been possible in uh, the last few years, but we want to uh, just reiterate that that is still a possibility and we are following up as the organizers to make that happen in terms of resources and in terms of practical possibilities in the near uh, future. I also like others would like to thank the participants. Really, this is uh, what the competition is about. And I want to emphasize perhaps that it really is a pyramid, a pyramid of participants, right? We saw today two teams, but let us not forget that there were around 50 teams that came through to the preliminary rounds and they were then um, semi-final and quarter-final rounds. But before we even have the 50 teams, often at many universities, there are numerous uh, students who will compete before the two that represent the university would emerge. So I think that it, uh, we, we acknowledge that there really is a broad cascading group that hopefully have been exposed to and that uh, we thank for their participation uh, in making uh, this mood possible and the success. We trust that you all found that this experience was not interfering with your academic studies, but actually enriched it and gave it a, 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 an impetus um, towards uh, human rights protection that perhaps had not been uh, in the forefront of your mind before. So congratulate to all uh, participants. I also want to emphasize the role of the mood coaches. We call them mood coaches, but they may be very different kinds of individuals or groups. At each university, there may be a mood court society. There may be lecturers or groups of lecturers working with teams and others. There may be uh, alumni of the moods that organize themselves, we recognize the role that all of you play in ensuring continuity so that from here to here, there are teams that are prepared to uh, participate and that you give them the guidance and the leadership. We really appreciate your roles as those at the different universities that keep the, the mood court fire burning, so to say. To the judges, um, let me start though, as always, it's not only the final round judges, the judges that um, scored the memorials, that's perhaps the, the most thankless, the hardest work, because as you know, there are 50 teams in, in principle that participate from the five UN regions. So they, they, those are quite a number of memorials to go through. Your dedication is much appreciated. Then we had the preliminary rounds um, in the two different languages in English, 
and in Spanish. We had five Spanish universities um, arguing in, in, in that language and the, the majority in English. The moot court is advertised as a competition that runs in English, French and in Spanish. But uh, this year we did not have French rounds uh, because there was ultimately only one, only one French, you know, uh, French speaking university, not from France, but from a French speaking university that, that had finally submitted its memorials. We thank the judges in all these rounds and we really um, truly honestly also thank our judges for this final round. You have given much luster to our competition today, Judge uh, Jelik, uh, taking the role also of the president. Uh, Professor Maina Peter, thank you very much for also joining us. Professor Veronica Gomez from the Global Campus and Yash Asvi, uh, thank you so much for uh, doing this so professionally, so fluently and giving uh, those wonderful remarks uh, of encouragement also to our participants. I want to thank, I don't know if I should call him the author, the drafter of the problem, of the, the hypothetical uh, Veronica already highlighted uh, that it was quite an intriguing, and I think Chris Mano Peter mentioned that it was was eleven uh, long pages. But I think all of us who read the hypothetical cannot but be impressed about how it has woven together a, a legal, intellectual kind of mindfulness together with a spirit of uh, the poet of imagination and contemporary cutting edge issues. So I think. Um, Dr. Thompson Chengeta, I think you are also here on the call. We we uh, acknowledge your contributions, your uh, drafting skills, your imagination. Not only this year, but Dr. Chengeta has been doing this or leading the team that has done this over a number of years. Thank you, thank you so much for that. The speakers at today's event uh, that have preceded us here, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, uh, a wonderful. Uh, warm and inspiring words. We really appreciate and take deep notice of those also representing the UN and the office uh, at this event. We thank uh, Claudia Martin as ever for being here for her words of inspiration. We thank our Dean, Professor Skuman, and not only for being here, but also for representing the university and for the support that we as a center receives from the Faculty of Law and from the university and from you personally, we really do appreciate that. We thank also uh, um, and everyone who's made the specific proceedings today so uh, fluid and, and so um, professional. I would like, as always, to thank the interpreters, uh, Paula and Ramon. And I think in a competition like that, the role of the interpreters are really pertinent because they are not just uh, conveying a, in a general sense what has been said, but they, they convey very particular detailed legal arguments. So we really appreciate the exactitude with which they were able to assist us. We also then, in terms of us at the center, I would like to thank a number of people. Um, a mood court competition is, is, is a team effort. The, it has to be a team effort, that is for sure. So in, in addition to all the others that I've mentioned, Clearly, the, the heartbeat of the mood lies lies in the center, and um, everyone in the center, in a, in a way, in the Center for Human Rights is involved. Those who do the communications and the posters, those who do the finances and admin. So you can see it really, it really just is everyone uh, that is involved. Um, but inside a team, there are those who deserve particular mention, who come and come across and, and, and really establish themselves. So I think I would like to mention just a few names. I think there's in the technical team, because uh, since we did this on Zoom, there were many, many, many sessions that Yolanda and Taruna and some people and the team assisted us with. And we really, really appreciate you and your contributions. It was, um, those who acted as, in a sense, bailiffs, holding the courtrooms together. There is uh, Carol Thuljun, who is our office manager, but she does manage so many other things. There is no way any title can describe accurately what Carol does in the center. Thank you so much, Carol, for your contributions, together with Emily Lobscher, who um, is also uh, involved in our financial management. Marty, who joined our team this year, together with Eduardo, 
Thank you to all of you, Simon, and all our judges uh, from the center as well. I think that um, I will uh, not be able to mention everyone by name, but let me conclude my thanks by mentioning one name, and that is the name of Eduardo Capapello. Dr. Capapello is in the course of the mood, not only organized the mood, but he came a doctor as well. He continued his studies. So I think just for all of us who know him well and have worked with him, we should be noticing that um, Eduardo, um, uh, I personally, and I'm sure everyone who works with you appreciates your, your very calm uh, nature, your way of uh, progressing with issues despite any tensions or difficulties, your professionalism, your um, thoroughness, and your, your, your unflappable nature. The mood has, has benefited so much from your uh, leadership and your um, professionalism. We thank you and appreciate you very, very deeply. So um, to, to that, I might just add, it's not quite part of the mood, but there is also the Nelson Mandela lecture that had taken place on uh, Tuesday. So uh, part of the mood court competition is that we have the Nelson Mandela uh, lecture. We just want to thank everyone involved in that. Usually it would be done in person, but again, that was also done virtually um, this year. Let me then um, go to what I think everyone really wants to get me to get, get to, and that is the um, uh, announcement of some results. Let me just say that these results will be posted on the center's website. So as soon as we are done here, these results and the more detailed results. So every team will find, you know, a longer list of results, not now maybe, but in a, in a short, short while. First of all, there are the memorial prizes. Um, so we said that teams um, qualify for the moot through submitting memorials, written arguments. Um, one team did so in French. So we have, a, we have an honorable mention. I think they should be mentioned. That is the Institut Universitaire d'Abidjan in Côte d'Ivoire. So that is our French team memorial uh, honorable mention. In the, Spen in the Spanish language uh, category, I'll mention the two top teams in terms of the memorial. So in terms of the written memorial, the marks awarded. The second best team there was the Universidad Católica de Colombia. And the best memorials were written by Universidad Central del Ecuador. So those were our memorial um, ranking for the Spanish teams. In the English uh, group, uh, by far then the majority of the teams, I take the liberty of mentioning the top 10, just to also acknowledge the very hard work that goes into this. The 10th position for the memorials in English was the, the West Bengal National University of Juridical Sciences in Kolkata, that's India. Number nine, University of Oxford and the Geneva Academy of International Humanitarian Law and Human Rights. So we could say joint in eighth place. In the seventh place, National Law Institute University, Bhopal, India. Number six, African Nazarene University in Kenya. Joint fourth position is the Kutafin Moscow State Law University in Russia and the Centro Universitario Curitiba in Brazil. So this Brazilian based university had decided and participated in the English rounds because we, we don't have a Portuguese round. In the third place, the East West University in Bangladesh. Congratulations, third place in the memorial ranking. In the second position for the memorials, let me take a deep breath, the Dr. Ram Manohar Lohija National Law University in India. Congratulations, second position for the memorials. And the best memorials were written by Atma Yaya Catholic University of Indonesia. So congratulations to those teams. We will also correspond with you just to give you some uh, certification of that. Best oralists. Now the best oralist performance are um, calculated on the basis of the preliminary rounds. So we did not take into account the final rounds. That is for the preliminary rounds where all the participants were equally uh, given an opportunity. In the Spanish, we have the top three. In the third place um, in the preliminary rounds for the individual oralists. So that is now for the individual 
we have uh, Marco Mamani. He is from uh, Universidad Nacional de San Agustin in Peru. The second, the runner up for the um, oralist performance in the Spanish language is Boada and uh, Vanessa, Vanessa Boada from uh, Universidad Central del Ecuador. And the best oralist in the preliminary rounds was uh, Elaine Lara, also from Universidad Central del Ecuador. Congratulations to, to those. In the English uh, competition, the best oralists, I will take them also from the uh, 10th position up. Number 10 is uh, Julia Resi from Univers University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Congratulations. Number nine, Akmal Amuladin, University of Malaysia or Malaya University in Malaysia. Uh, number eight, Shania Robinson, University of Singapore. Number seven, Baya Upadhyay from Symbiosis School of Law in Pune University in India. So you can just see the broad geographical spread that our winners also represent. Number six in the best English speaking oralists was Kevin Kipchirchir uh, from Kabarak University in Kenya. Number five is uh, Uklak Ul-Islam uh, Tusar and uh, Aklak is from East West University in Bangladesh. The fourth best oralist in the preliminary rounds was uh, Samson Muchiri, also from Kabarak University in Kenya. The third best uh, oralist was uh, Johan Nishat from East West University, Bangladesh. The second best oralist in the preliminary rounds, Noor, that is Sumaya Noor from Strathmore University, and the best oralist in the preliminary rounds judged by the judges in those rounds was Sanjana Ragu, also from Strathmore University. Congratulations to those, the best individual oralists. As I say, we will also uh, communicate with you. Uh, ordinarily now you'd come to the front, you'd shake the hands of the judge, president, and you'll be given a plaque, but we'll work out alternative arrangements. I come to the teams. So the best uh, Spanish teams, again, in the preliminary rounds, the best Spanish uh, language teams in the third place was, that is the overall performance of the teams in the preliminary rounds. Third, Universidad Rafael Landivar Campus, Coatzelal Tenango uh, in Guatemala. The second is the University Nacional de San Agustin in Peru, and the winning university for the preliminary rounds was Universidad Central del Ecuador. So congratulations, that is just another plume in your, in your hat. Uh, that is the best uh, language, uh, Spanish language universities over the preliminary rounds. The top English teams um, are, and uh, I could say that of these English teams, then seven, the top seven universities went through to the quarterfinals and uh, of the Spanish uh, universities won. So because we worked on the proportion of representation, one Spanish speaking university went to the quarterfinal, that was obviously Unusdat Central del Ecuador, and the top seven English universities went through to the quarterfinal. So let me just mention uh, the uh, top 10. So you'll see that there are three English language universities that had not proceeded to the final uh, or the, the quarterfinals. We, we just uh, acknowledge them as well. So number 10 was the Federal University of Bahia, UFBA, in Brazil. Congratulations. Number nine was University of Malaya in Malaysia. And number eight was University of Singapore in Singapore. Number seven, who went through to the quarterfinals, was the West Bengal National University of Juridical Sciences in Kolkata, India. Number six was the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Number five, Oxford University in the United Kingdom. Four, Symbiosis School of Law, Pune, India. Four, uh, three, my apologies. Number three, Kabarak University, Kenya. Number two, East West University, Bangladesh. And number one, Strathmore University, Kenya. 
So those first seven universities went through the quarterfinals together with the Spanish speaking university, Universidad Central del Ecuador. The semifinalists then that emerged from those, the four semifinalists were then Oxford University, United Kingdom, Kabarak University, Kenya, Strathmore University, Kenya, and Universidad Central del Ecuador. And uh, up to now, I think you've heard mention of the names of the universities. We, as organizers and as judges, the judges were not aware of where the universities uh, that they see the students where they come from, but you have now realized that the two universities uh, together uh, in the final round were uh, Strathmore University and Universidad Central del Ecuador. So congratulations to all our teams, all our individual oralists, all those who wrote the memorials. We congratulate you, we commend you, um, we celebrate you. Um, but we know that it's not all about the winning. We do uh, acknowledge, we do appreciate that for most of you, I'm sure that it is just as much about the enrichment of this wonderful experience and uh, to see how these human rights instruments, these treaties, these soft law documents can actually be woven into your arguments that we want you to take along with you as you proceed, whether it is at the national, the regional, or at the global level, that as practitioners of law, you will never forget this experience and uh, take uh, with it what you can. So with those words, I once again just acknowledge everyone's contribution, thank everyone for their wonderful contributions to make this the 13th Nelson Mandela competition uh, a very memorable one. But our conclusion will then be that I go back to Judge Jelik. I will ask her to announce the team that is our winning team for this, the 13th Nelson Mandela World Human Rights Mood Court competition. And I will also ask her to officially close our proceedings. Over to you, Judge Jelik. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Van Yoon. Uh, it is my, my great pleasure and genuine honor uh, to announce the winning team of 13th Nelson Mandela World Human Rights Competition, which took place in a virtual format due to the global crisis caused by the pandemic of COVID-19. So this is the second time, as you said, and I hope that we uh, fulfilled our mission, although we would, I think, all prefer to go back to, to a normal, normal format where we could really uh, uh, talk to each other and, uh, and shake our hands. Um, but before I, I share with you the decision of judicial panel in a final round, I would like to cordially congratulate to both teams. Uh, felicitation a todos or felicitation a tout le monde for uh, an outstanding uh, performance uh, that showed excellency in international human rights, uh, standard knowledge, uh, uh, which showed also that um, knowledge of uh, young uh, and highly professional qualified lawyers uh, uh, were uh, satisfactory and uh, a great pleasure to spend today with uh, with uh, uh, all of them witnessing uh, outstanding knowledge of contemporary international human rights standards and the case law of international human rights courts and UN treaty bodies. Um, uh, I thank to both of them for, for their excellent legal and organizational skills as well and the clarity in their performance. And now I would like to announce on behalf of judicial panel and the organizers that the winning team is the team of University of Strathmore from Kenya, team one. Congratulations. So and now I'm waving instead of uh, shaking your hands. Uh, and I would like to thank to, to the organizing, uh, organizers for inviting me for the second time. It is my, my great pleasure and I'm sending you my greetings from Montenegro where I, where I was able to come after two years of not being in my home country. So this is also special, special uh, maybe uh, thing to, to, <laughs> uh, to share with you as well. It's a personal note, but I think the note which could be shared for, for among all of us uh, because the pandemic hit on our private lives, also not only professional lives. 
uh, which are more or less uh, virtually conducted. Thank you all. And I wish you a lovely summer and all the best to you and your families. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Next time. <laughs>